a registered brand name called Jewish Business School, which is under Singapore Chamber of Commerce and Industry. So why call Jewish Business Course? Basically, right, okay, as you can see, okay, it's based on the foundation of the Book of Tamak. Okay, the Tamak was the centerpiece of Jewish culture living and was actually the foundation to all Jewish thoughts and aspiration. So a lot of the teaching, right, is based on the, uh, this uh, book itself and it's based on the daily guide uh, for, for the daily life of the Jews. So um, I'll be explaining more. Okay, firstly, the wealth methodology, how the Jewish people actually perceive wealth. This is very important. Okay, now um, with this understanding, then you know how you can actually start. Later, we will have uh, some tests for you all so that you can actually better appreciate it. Now, basically, to the Jewish thinking itself, all entrepreneurs, we all wanted to do make money. We want to earn our wealth. Okay, so every business that we started off, right, always start off with are we able to make money? Are we able to uh, create wealth through our business? Now, in the Jewish thinking, in the book of Tamar itself, it's not like this. To them, you must first understand, money to them is just only a transactable item itself. Okay, it's just a verifiable record. When they start a business, they never talk about money. That means to say, to them, money is not important. Okay, there must be a greater purpose in starting this business. Okay, to find the needs of your customer and then pursue it. Okay, now to them, okay, I must say that right in the Jewish thinking, okay, money itself, right, cannot bring you wealth, okay, cannot give you power. Okay, and they do not re regard anyone whether you are rich or poor itself, it's, it's not important. Okay, now what important is you must enjoy the process of making money. Okay, that itself is important. Okay, so this process itself, right, okay, is about growing yourself, developing yourself and making yourself better. Okay, in this process itself, of course, money can come in. So, let's look at Mark Zuckerberg. Okay, I think all of you under know that he's uh, the founder of Facebook. When he created Facebook, okay, he was simply trying to solve a problem he saw around him. He never thought about making money. He, in fact, don't know how to monetize making money through Facebook. He don't know how to. But at his hostel itself, when he was trying to create Facebook, okay, he never even thought about starting a company. But he's so passionate in creating a product. Okay, why? Because he see a problem. When you see a problem itself, okay, what you can do, you can start to try to solve a problem through a business model. Yes, for the initial phase, you realize something that, hey, what exactly is business all about? Okay, I don't know, but I know that if I create something like this, it can bring people together. I can bring a network together. I can create a platform. I can fill up gaps. I can solve an issue itself. From then on, when you answer the basic needs of solving someone else's problem, what will then happen? Eventually, you will find a way that um, you can make money. But to you, is money important? No. When you're pursuing your dreams, when you're building something up, okay, please understand that. There is much more important things than making money, a greater purpose, so that you are passionate in carrying on what you're doing. Okay, now all of us, right, as entrepreneurs have million dollars ideas. Very important. If we do not have ideas itself, we can't grow. Okay, but the, the, the most important part is, did we actually do something about the ideas? Did we start something? Now this part is very, very um, easy to understand, but very difficult to do. Because there is a lot of entrepreneurs that is in this market, right? What we do is we have a million dollar idea. And every time when we come out and present, okay, we will tell people that we have this idea itself, we need money. The next question is, what have you started? What have you actually proved yourself to be worth this money? Have you able to are you able to deliver without the money? What are you able to do? Steve Jobs started Apple, okay? in his uh, parents' garage. So before, okay, you start your presentation sometimes, right? Okay, before you share your ideas out, ask yourself, what if you do not, you are not able to get funding? Are you still proceeding on? Are you still able to grow? The additional funding is just to push you even faster. Not for you to start your business. You have to start somewhere, okay? And this first step is the most important step, okay? Now, Let's look at a short video, okay, by uh, our Facebook founder, Mark Zuckerberg, okay. It was my fault. I wondered if I was just wrong.
an imposter, a, a 22-year-old kid who had no idea how things actually worked. Now, years later, I understand that that is how things work when there's no sense of higher purpose. So it's up to all of us to create it so we can all keep moving forward together. One of my favorite stories is when JFK went to go visit the NASA Space Center and he saw a janitor holding a broom and he asked him what he was doing and the janitor replied, Mr. President, I'm helping put a man on the moon. Purpose is that feeling that you are a part of something bigger than yourself, that you are needed, and that you have something better ahead to work for. Purpose is what creates true happiness. J.K. Rowling got rejected 12 times before she finally wrote and published Harry Potter. Even Beyonce had to make hundreds of songs to get Halo. The greatest successes come from having the freedom to fail. Ideas don't come out fully formed. They only become clear as you work on them. You just have to get started. So from this video itself, right, you can actually see that there's a few very important points. Ask yourself these simple questions. What is your purpose right now? What is the purpose of your business right now? Is your purpose of the business trying to make money? Or you're trying to create a positive impact into people's life that can change people's life. Now, this itself is very important. If you actually go into the wrong setting itself, right, basically you don't understand business. People will feel that, hey, no, you just want to make money from me. You just want to earn my $5, $10, $20, $1,000 itself. Your intent is not trying to solve a problem for me. You are not giving me the values. You are just trying to make money. Now, with that kind of intention itself, right, people can feel. When people feel that itself, do you think you can do your business? No. So now, next, what exactly is a business? Okay, we have to understand what exactly is business all about. Business, right, is all about balance. Now, what exactly is it about in terms of balance? Okay, in Chinese, we call it Jin Shang Zhi Dao. Basically, right, anything that you try to benefit yourself but do not benefit others itself, right, we assume that as a small business. Basically, okay, this assumption, okay, benefit yourself, don't benefit others. When we say benefit others, we are talking about the values that they can feel. Okay, so the moment that, okay, the value, okay, is greater than what they actually come up with, whether is it money, okay, in exchange for a product, but they found that the value is a lot greater. Basically, you are on the right track. But think about it, if people are buying a product from you, okay, why? Because you're talking, you're persuading them, because you're in the right distribution channel, because you are doing the right marketing. Basically, your product itself do not have a strong marketing value. It's do not have a strong product value. What you have is depending on distribution, channels, marketing, sales. So you need to put in extra effort. We always want you to develop your product value. And this product value goes to your customer, it becomes a perceived value that is greater than what they are using money to exchange for. Okay, from then on, okay, there will be words of mouth business now. Next, benefit yourself, benefit others. We assume we say that as a big business. So whatever you try to create, always look at how you can benefit the rest of other people. So that when they feel that the value is much bigger, oh, of course they, they feel that, oh, this is worth the value. I will want to put my money in with you. Next, anything that is benefiting others, don't benefit yourself, is not a business. In Chinese, 愚人有利, 愚己无利, 非常. So what it means is that, right, some people say, oh, I just want to do charity, I want to help people, but you can't even sustain yourself. This is not a business, understand that? A business must be able to sustain yourself. No need that. Taking advantage of others, benefit yourself, unethical merchant. Okay, Some business people, they are out to just cheat people. So we have to be careful about that. So ask yourself then with this understanding, which part are you at? Your intention is to make money. Is it? If your intention is to make money itself, right? Then people will feel that you are trying to make money. You are not trying to solve them a problem. You are not trying to add values to their life. You are not trying to add values, okay, to whatever they are getting. No. Would that help you in your business? No, you can't. 
So the starting point in terms of how you want to actually grow a business is important. Next. Now, there's this saying, 发上等愿,结中等愿,想下等福. Dream big. Okay? You must have friends, common friends, socialize yourself well, irregardless of rich or poor, and at the same time, enjoy the simplicity in life. Now, this is important. Why? If you don't dream big itself, you don't know how you're going to implement it. If you don't understand, okay, your social circle itself, whether they are rich or they are poor, you do not understand what problem people are facing. How are you then able to create positive feedback into people's life? And if you do not enjoy the simplicity in life, you are pursuing for branded stuff, rich house, big house. What happened? You are always pursuing for something, but not trying to solve the issues that people are facing and creating values for people. So while you keep your life simple itself, right, you're adding values. You are passionate about growing your business to solve simply a problem for people and creating positive impact into people's life. And this is why, okay, in the book of Tema itself, they believe that you are just like the grapes in the grape vineyards. The fatter you grow, okay, you bend down even more itself. You need to be even more humble. Okay, build oneself, pursue humility, Okay, very simple understanding. Now next. Now this is something very interesting. Okay, all of us, right, uh, have heard this story. If you want to learn from someone, learn from, uh, if you want to learn driving, you need to learn from an instructor that know how to drive. If you want to learn about business itself, right, okay, you must learn from someone that know about business, correct? And there's so many mentors that actually share with you this value and tell you that you must learn from them. But the biggest problem is what? Okay, the key important thing is not to learn from one. Learn from a lot of people. Not just the trainer, not just the experienced people, also from the commoner sometimes. And it's also very important, do not idolize any trainer. That means to say, don't just because he can talk very well, you idolize him, wow, he's God, he's teaching me the right thing. Don't ever do that, okay? Now, around the world itself, right, you know, there is such a thing whereby, you know, when you are in the classroom, people create peer pressure, wow, we make you into, go into competitions, make you feel good. Now, you have to know how to control your emotion. Okay, when you are attending talks, seminars. Okay, so that right, you don't get too carried away. But the basic fundamental is always stay, okay, very clear to yourself that you are here to get knowledge and learn as much as you can and improve on your intellectual in terms of your your ways of doing business. So this is very important. Okay, and we have seen a lot of trainer users peer pressure. Okay, uh, the environment, the atmosphere to stir up. Um, basically. <laughs> The, the the crowd itself okay now sometimes when you go to a seminar you will hear you know you can see people oh want to sign up everyone come out stand up but you don't really understand that you know why got so many people sign up maybe they are, they are being paid to actually stand up and, and pretend to sign up so do not be stirred by all this stay calm understand okay next now basically okay uh, this one is yeah. skip. okay now uh i want to share a joke okay something very real okay now, all of us have attended seminars before, okay, and these seminars are very common title itself. What if I can change your life by making you very, 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 very rich within 30 days? You all heard of this seminar before, right? And then after that, they have this, uh, wow, a person, very rich face, you know, collecting all the money. And they tell you, I can make you very rich, trust me. You all heard of that before? Heard of that, right? Everyone promised you that, correct? So now, let me share a story with you, huh? very simple. I also can make you very rich. You don't believe that? Okay, let me share how I can make you very, 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 very rich. Huh? Okay, then let's see whether you can understand. Now, all of you uh, do not receive an email from me, okay, telling you that, hey, okay, I got insider information. This insider information is about a soccer match, okay? No one knows one, okay? We only want some people to know, okay? Now, the interesting thing is, right, basically, we know that Japan, okay, versus Korea, okay, football match, huh? okay, for this year's one, huh? just a case study only, huh? I tell you, I know who will win, first match, I tell you, Japan will win, indeed, pa, first match, Japan win, everyone happy, okay, so you start to look at the email, okay, no? Japan win, first email, then you receive a second email, you see, last week I told you, right, okay, basically I know, I got insider information, okay, Japan will win, okay, indeed, Japan win, the second match itself now, okay, Singapore, Okay, versus Malaysia, assuming. Okay, I say, 
Now I tell you, Malaysia will win. Okay, second match again. Park, indeed. I guess correctly. Malaysia win again. Second match, you know, I guess correctly. Third match itself, huh? okay, we say Indonesia versus Singapore. Correct? I also tell you, I got insider information. Okay? Third match, huh? Park, correct. Indonesia win. Exactly how I predicted. Okay? How I predicted. On the fourth match now. Okay? Now you're roughly thinking, uh, hey, how come I, you know, better than the octopus, right? You know, the octopus, uh, okay, can actually predict the matches itself. Now I predict Japan, okay, versus maybe China. Correct? Okay, I also can tell you who will win. Now, how many of you, uh, okay, now I give you free tips. Free tips, uh, okay, free tips, okay. All of you uh, can join me, okay, by paying me. $1,000, assuming, uh, okay? If I give you the tips, one, you give me $1,000, right? I'll give you the tips. Okay, I'll tell you who will win. Okay? If lose, uh, I will refund you back the money. Okay? No joke, I will refund you back the money. Alright? Okay? How many of you want to bet this game with me? Okay? On the fourth match, I give you the answer. Who want to bet? One. Okay? One person, uh. So basically, uh, part. I tell you, Japan win. He very happy. He made money. Okay, exactly. All of you just see him making money. He very happy. Wow, very cute. Correct. I predict on the fifth match. Again, I said, okay, uh, Korea versus okay, maybe China, something like that. I also know how many of you want to participate now. Make money, you know. Hundred percent sure win one, no? Okay, your investment is one thousand dollars only. Okay, I will give you the answer. How many? You win, you play on more round, right? Should play on more round, right? Okay, okay, good. So again, he give one thousand dollars. I give him the tips again. Five batch, all correct. No mistake at all. All correct, ah. Huh? Five batch. Okay, on the sixth batch. Now I play again. Okay, Japan again versus Malaysia. Now I tell you, ah, huh? Malaysia will win. Okay. You, how many of you want to bet with me? That means you say put in one thousand dollars to get the tips. How many of you? No, nobody. Got okay one. Yeah, let's go. He paid one thousand dollars. This match, I guess strongly. I guess strongly. Okay, Japan win. Okay, I said very very sorry because of my mistake itself, right? Okay, you guess I guess wrongly, but because of that, I'll refund you one thousand five hundred dollars. Happy huh? I give you 1,005, you know, because uh, the insider tips was wrong. I make the mistake, but I give you 1,005. You trust me more? You will. Will you spread when you make money, when you got the tips? Yes. Will you bring more friends to come? Yes. If I give you a referral, will you even bring more friends to come? Because you believe in that. Because you realize that there's no way you can lose money. Will you? Yes. Okay, so on the seven match now, okay, I again say Japan versus maybe Korea, something like that. How many of you now want to bet with me? $1,000 only, still one. Okay, again, the whole cycle carry on. I win, I lose, I lose, I return you back the money. What did I just do? Anyone know what did I just do? Okay, this is very common. Okay, in this market itself. Okay, people tell you that they can make money and then after they ask you to put in money and believe in it. This is basically a probability game. Okay, basically 6,400 emails was being sent out, assuming. Okay, A and B. A will win, then after that A and B again. Down here 3,002, 1,600, 1,600. 800, 800. 400, 400. It's a number game. When we reach until certain stage itself, right? Whether win or lose is not important. If you lose, I return you back the money. If win, I win the money. Do I really have the insider information? No, I don't have. But end of the day itself, right? The 400 people that 
or even 200 of them have won five times. And these 200 people will tell people that, hey, you see, I've made my money five times already. Why? Because it's probability. The rest that lose out, don't worry, we find them the money. It's a money game. There is no easy way to get rich. Understand now? When people actually tell you that, oh, I can give you money, okay? Give me money, I can help you to get rich. You need to be more careful about it. Because there's no such easy things in this market. When people actually want your money, then you ask yourself, why can't they make the money themselves first? <laughs> okay, to be very honest with you. So be very, very careful, okay, every time when you um, see something like this, what if I can change your life by making you very rich and then ask you to actually pump me money itself? Okay, ask them, okay, la, if you can make yourself very rich, you don't need to share. In this market, there's so many of this nonsense, which which is not doing good for people itself. You know, when there's this seminal, that seminal itself, telling people, trust me, I can make you very rich, put in your money itself, then why not they gonna do it themselves? <laughs> okay, don't need your money. Okay, la? Okay, this is a fundamental. I hope you understand probability itself. Now, in the internet, there's a lot of this like fixed match, hundred percent sure. Uh, football predictions, best football match, best football soccer betting software, that kind of things. Okay, there's no such thing as easy money in this world. Okay, please understand that. Next, okay, in this concept we call if you shoot enough euro, somehow you hit the target. Huh? <laughs> okay. Now, uh, this case study, I just want to share, okay, next time uh, we got more time to share on this case study. This is a legal case study, very interesting. Now, in the Jewish thinking itself, right, um, a lot of things is got to do with uh, subconscious. Later, I want to cover, this is the basic fundamental first. Later, I'll be covering some detailed fundamentals on the subconscious part of it. Example, how you should sell your items, how you should actually portray your, your sales itself. All this is very important for you to learn, especially for entrepreneurs and corporate staff. If not, your boss, right, asks you a question, you don't know how to answer that. So, the basic technique is basically a hinting method, call to advertising. Now, although I say that this is a basic uh, method itself, right, okay, let's try to understand later, see whether you can apply it. Now, basically, okay, this is a shampoo itself, okay, in order to sell the shampoo, right, what they do is that, right, they put longer, stronger, better. Now, what are they trying to do, okay, at one end itself, right, is trying to use, affect your subconscious mind to show you the value in the product. Now, the value is very important, understand now? The value of the product is very important. And all these things, right, affects how you perceive it. They are not telling you this is a shampoo, okay? It's just a small little, but they are telling you that, hey, if you want to have received the value of longer, stronger, and better hair itself, right, you use this product. So remember, every time when you do a product, okay, or you want to sell something itself, out front, show the values to your customer, okay? In the shortest, easier way for them to absorb. Now, this is important, okay? Next. Now, look at the milk part, make you stronger. Very simple concept, okay? But why didn't they put down that milk, but make you stronger, okay? Now, Maybelline, maybe she born with it, maybe it's Maybelline. Subconsciously, it's telling you that this brand itself, right, can make you look nicer, all right? Okay, so try to make sure that, right, you must let your customer receive the perceived value, which is important, okay? Now next, of course, uh, let's talk about, okay, let's move on with uh, generic traffic, this one, let's skip a bit, huh? okay, today you want to cover some simple things itself. Now, this old man itself, right, okay, basically he loves to sell eggs, okay, every morning itself, right, he will be at the market, okay, preparing his freshest apple and the freshest egg, okay? Now, the question then is this, you know, is he doing the right thing? No. Why? Okay? The reason is because, right, okay, in the Jewish thinking itself, right, if you have a good product, it's important for you to shout out to the market so that your customer can buy from you. Provided you have a good we assume that you really have a good product, okay, if you are going to be in the entrepreneurship. So this old man is not doing justice to his product. Why? And not doing justice to his customer. Because, right, what we believe in is that, right, okay. You are actually, if you sit down there, nobody knows that every morning you only selling 20 eggs and this eggs itself is the freshest egg that you actually pick from the farm. So it's important to tell people, I only selling 20 eggs and this 20 eggs is the freshest. If my, if I am the customer, I do not know about it because I, when I walk in front of you, you never tell me about it, right? In the Jewish thinking, right, he's wrong. Why? 
he allowed me to actually buy from someone that is selling much more inferior products. Okay, same thing for the apple. Every morning he only pick ten apples, the freshest apple. So it's his responsibility to shout to the market, tell people that I have the best product. This is the freshest product. This is the best. It's your responsibility as an entrepreneur to tell people about your product. Okay, to be honest, so that people see the value in it. Okay, so this is something that we believe in. Cosmetology. Now, in the Jewish thinking itself, the seed for growth must not be eaten. Basically, what are the seed for growth? Things like branding. Okay, things like people can be the seed of growth. Okay, so it's very very important for you to understand that, right? The seed of growth, right? Okay, cannot be taken, cannot be eaten, or cannot be sold. Okay, always keep the seed. Now, next. Now, this case study is about um, a group of men. They found that ah, there is a uh, this gold mine in this particular place itself, and everyone rush for, rush to actually go and uh, mine the gold down there. Then you ask yourself this question: When everyone is rushing to go and mine gold, collecting gold sand down there, what what are the opportunity that's available for you? Now, this is something very important. Okay, can anyone share? Okay, what are the opportunity that's available? Do you when everyone is going? Then to my goal, the Jewish look at it in a totally different way. Maybe there is an opportunity to sell jeans. Maybe there is an opportunity to sell food. Maybe there are opportunity, okay, to sell digging equipments. So sometimes, right, okay, opportunity is there, but when everyone is focused on mining gold, you lose the bigger picture. Maybe selling. Food down there, selling jeans down there is uh, can earn even more money, okay, compared to mining gold. Now, uh, <coughs> okay, now there is this interesting story, okay, about a boss, okay, um, buying dinner for their staff, okay. So in the dinner table itself, right, the boss, the boss actually ordered a fish, okay, which is very common. So he cut the fish head. And give it to the HR department, telling the HR department that wow, you are the most important department in my group because you are like the head. Okay, you show us okay the way. Okay, without you itself, right? Basically, we we do not have a head. Okay. Then after that, she gives the fee to the accounts department. Wow, you are very important. You balance the whole accounts department. Without your fee, without this fee itself, right? We cannot balance ourselves. Okay, and we will fall down. Not only that, he cut the tail and give it to the marketing department, telling the marketing department that, "Woo, you are very important department. Without this fin itself, right? Basically, we can't move forward. The whole company can't even move forward. Important, important. Give the backbone to the operation department. The bone, telling the operation department that, "Wow, look at here. Without this bone, basically we can't even be called a fish. So basically, right." Okay, you are so important to us. Then looking at the mess he created, he said, "Oh, this is the mess I created, leaving behind the meat." Okay lah. Okay, I will finish the the meat lah. <laughs> now, what's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is that right, whether it's good or bad, always must learn how to say the right things, the good things to people, encourage them. Okay, so try to understand this story, and every time you order a fish yourself, right, always. Tell your employee how important they are, even when they are given just a head or a tail. But always show appreciation. Okay. Now, three steps of entrepreneurship. Okay, by Mr. Masuyashi San from SoftBank. When he was young himself, okay, during the time when he was uh in the school, okay, he tell people that oh, I'm not going to be like the rest of the graduate itself. You know, learning, studying. Okay, the moment that I step out from my school itself, I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm going to sign big contract itself. I'm able to sell my stuff. So what exactly happened is that right? Okay, he got no business idea itself. So he took out a dictionary and he pointed two words. Okay, and in this word itself, right? What happened? There's a big dictionary mix. He put down there. Okay, electronic and then translation. So this is the words that he actually found. So what he did then after that, he actually test the demand. He actually sent out to okay um different big companies to ask them. Hey, will you be interested in this electronic device that uh we are going to develop and uh, the prototype is going to be ready. So basically, right? Okay, he test the demand from the big companies and he received okay uh some. 
uh, response from the big company saying that yes, I'm interested for you to actually showcase this product to me, okay, and to see the viability of it. So then, with this letter from the big companies, he then asked his professor, in his lecturer, okay, his professor in his school itself, to ask them, are you able to deliver this uh, or or produce this uh, device, the electronic translation machine that can be put in the airport where you type in English words itself, you can translate to Japanese, Japanese words can translate to English. So the professor saw this, said, hey, can, no problem, give me about one year, six months, around that kind of period, I'll develop this product out. When the product is developed out, what happened? He then actually present it back to the company. Very simple steps. So firstly, right, testing the demand, know that there is a demand for the product itself. Next, getting the right team to actually develop it. And then after that, okay, once you have the demand, the product will sell by itself. You don't need to look at marketing channel. You don't have to, okay? So then ask yourself, are there the products that you can actually look at? Think about it. This laser pointer used to be a mouse, okay, with a laser pointer combining together. That's why this is a remote controller. Okay, the microphone, okay, used to be a, you know, now we've got cordless microphone. Okay, things like laptop, used to be a computer with a briefcase, they combine together. So there is always product that you can improve on, that can improve people's life, that can create positive impact to people's life. So you just have to explore it and find the demand for it. Don't always say that oh, now everything is uh, available, there's no new products anymore for me to develop. Okay, always look at what is missing in this market. Okay, and you'll be able to find. Now basically, right, okay, uh, this is uh, something very interesting, which I uh, believe in, okay, the power of subconscious, in the Jewish thinking itself, the subconscious mind is a very powerful thing, okay, and especially, okay, there is uh, the focus on the imagination part. Now, basically, right, uh, before that, okay, let me cover this part, okay, uh, there's a belief, okay, that um, in the Jewish teaching itself, right, Never disclose the secret. Basically, itself, right? You know, if people can actually predict your future, telling you that this year you're going to be good, next year you're going to be lucky, next year you are meet with a uh, misfortune itself, right? The real master will not tell you, okay, what is going to happen. They don't even want to disclose it. Okay, the reason is because very simple. Okay, no master will disclose negativity. The real masters will always try to encourage and help you. Even when you know something is going to be bad, right? They will never tell you that. But they will try means to help you and keep it quiet. Why? We believe that never disclose the secret or Tinti Book Okay, This is something that we believe in. Not only that itself, right? A real master will never tell you or predict any negativity. When they tell you negativity itself, right? What will happen? You will feel, oh, no, this is something bad. I'm going, this year going to be bad for me. I need to do this, do that. So this is the, this is the last thing that we want to want humans to actually feel it. Not only that, there's a lot of people that say, ah, I don't want your money. After I predict already, I don't want your money. Give me a pound. Still the same, blah, still money. <laughs> okay. So be very very careful. Okay. Um, when you when you seek. Okay, or you try to um, get to know someone that is able to predict your future and then after that ask you for money. You know, these are things that people really don't do. Okay, the real master. So, be very, very careful with it. Now, the, the power of subconscious mind is very important. There is a way to actually train out your subconscious mind. Okay, through imagination. So, through imagination itself, right, okay, we always want you to actually imagine yourself in a state whereby you are in an environment. Okay, assuming like a house, like a, a green land, whereby you walk, and then after that, you start to have, release out your bad energy within that imagination stage. Now, when you're imagining itself, right, the interesting thing is that the more you actually imagine, okay, the more, okay, you are in the world of your own to purge out any negativity energy, which you can. You also will be able to receive good energy within your own arena itself. Now, this is important. Okay, so the clarity in this uh, arena, okay, in this imagination stage is very important. And this is why, right, it's important then after that to remember the details. When, example, you walk into the house, remember the, the detail of the house. Next time when you go back, remember the details of the house. Remember where the seats are, remember where the clock is, remember where the, the spoon are. When you walk out of the house through the river itself, you must be able to feel 
you know, the wind blowing, you know, the river, you are able to see. Remember, all this is in your imagination stage. The clearer you are, the better you'll be. So this is something that is uh, very, very essential for you, okay, in terms of um, the imagination states. Now, the next thing is that, right, once you go back again to your house, okay, if you want to go even deeper into the imagination stage itself, right, what you can do is that in the same place that you feel comfortable with, reimagine again, okay? The deeper that you go from one level to one dimension to another dimension, eventually you are able to discover quite a lot of interesting things. And this interesting thing itself, right, will allow you to actually discover more about yourself. Then when you're able to discover this kind of see me, okay, we welcome you, okay, to get to know you a bit more. Okay, so we have found that, right, um, basically there's a group of people that's uh, able to discover once they go into the imagination stage and they all end up uh, in one common place. Okay, uh, so this is something that we welcome you. Okay, now not only that, let's go ahead. Now, pricing. Okay, in the Jewish thinking, uh, okay, there is no such thing as allowing comp competition through pricing. Why? Because the product that you sell to people, okay, is very clear. Okay, the product you sell to people have a value in it. So you cannot tell people that now I want to sell this marker at two dollars. Tomorrow I want to sell it at one eighty. The next day I want to sell it at one fifty. No. Why? This itself have a value, and this value itself, right? People will actually say that there is a value on this product. So when you are able to understand that, already fix a value. How can you reduce price? The only way to reduce price, right, is to, you know, you can put it down there, fragile, you know, uh, handle defective product. This is a defective product. This is going to expire soon. Or this is a used product. Example, a book that you cannot sell, you have to reduce the price. The Jewish chop to say that this is a second hand book. Sell it to you. Yes, you can reduce price. Not the brand new one. So, Always understand the starting point is always the value of the product that determines okay uh, how you're going to put in the, the product itself, okay, the pricing for the products. Okay, the interesting thing down here is that okay, in the Jewish uh, subconscious level and the thinking itself, right? Every time when you do business dealing with people, it's always first time. Meaning to say, if today your customers have already concluded a sales with you, do not assume that the next time, right, okay, you'll be the same thing again. Always treat it as the first time when you're doing a business. Okay? So this is very important. Okay? Now, um, there's this story about Mr. Gandhi. Okay, a reporter actually asked Mr. Gandhi this simple question. Uh, if I give you wisdom and I give you $1,000, which one will you choose? Okay, how many of you think that right Gandhi will choose wisdom one? Please put our hand. Okay, how many of you think Gandhi will choose uh, uh, $1,000? Put our hand. Gandhi actually choose $1,000. Why? Gandhi said, okay, that uh, I have wisdom already. Okay, I need the $1,000. So, the moral of the story is this. Always ask yourself what you lack in. If you lack in certain things itself, pursue that thing itself. Always remember, okay, that when you look at his face, remember that, okay, if he's, he lacked $1,000, go for the $1,000, not wisdom. He told the reporter, I got wisdom already. Give me the $1,000. Okay? Now, uh, okay, this is, uh, there's quite a lot of things. Now, there's this story, okay, about um, when the uh, US actually launched, uh, their, they bring their first astronaut up to the moon, okay? They actually get the French guy, the German guy, and the Israeli guy, okay, and interview them, uh, who to go up to the moon, okay, to land on the moon. So, Okay, he asked the French guy, how much you want? So the French guy said $30,000. Why? $10,000 for own use, $10,000 for my wife, and $10,000 to buy a house. Makes sense. Then he asked this handsome German guy, hey, so how much you want? Very simple, he said $40,000. $10,000 for own use, $10,000 for my wife, $10,000 to buy a house, and $10,000 for my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Makes sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, got girlfriends, huh? Girls, too charming. So then he asked the German, uh, the Israeli guy, how much you want? So guess what the Israeli guy say? How many of you think more? 20,000? Cheaper? Or how many of you think he want more expensive? How many of you think 50,000? Put ahead. Okay, so the Israeli actually wanted $50,000. Why? 10,000 for you, 10,000 for me, and 10,000 less employed the French guy. So basically, right, this concept is about what? Okay, 
whenever there's an opportunity to do business, this is very fundamental. Huh? Okay, there will be a lot of complicated things later I can share with you. Okay, do business. You must find the opportunity to do business. Okay, whether is it on today context of vouchers, redeemable things, there are so many ways to hack business and find the opportunity to do business. You must be able to identify it. The better you are, okay, the better business model you can develop. Up. Okay, so this is just the fundamental that I'm covering. Now there's this thing called the five jar of Jewish. Okay, what is it used for? It's usually used for the younger children that they are going to school. So the Jewish believe that right since young itself, right, they actually start to train up the children. Okay, how they train it? Okay, they ask the the the, the child. Okay, before they go to their like, primary school. Okay, so they ask the child. So son, okay, when you grow up, what do you want to be? So the son said, I want to be like that, you know, able to manage money, able to grow company, able to uh, grow my wealth, add values to people's life. Okay, so that is what the son usually say. So then the dad say, okay, I give you $20 for your pocket money, you're going to school very soon. Okay, how are you going to spend the money? So the son will say, oh, I'm going to actually go to the canteen and start to buy food and spend the money. So the dad will say, oh, then you're no difference from the rest of the other children. Because the other children are also doing that. So what he did, he take out the five jar. Okay, in this five jar, he actually labeled it. First jar, higher purpose. Second jar, giving. Third jar, saving. Fourth jar, invest. And fifth jar, expense. So he tell the child, okay, that no matter what you do, you must put something inside this jar. Whether it's more or less, you must put something. So the child itself don't, know, don't understand anything. He said, okay, since I got $20, higher purpose, I only contribute 10 cents. Ding. This 10 cent, okay, is for the higher purpose. The higher purpose is like their God, okay, you know, the, what they believe in, okay. So, the moment they drop in the coin itself, right, what exactly happened is that there is a seed that goes into the child's mind that the higher purpose, their God, is actually taking care of them, okay. Is it enough? No. Then, take another 10 cent, drop it up, giving, ding, drop inside this jar of giving. This action, right, actually allow a seed to be planted inside the, uh, the child's subconscious mind to tell them that you are now giving to people. You know how to give. Although it's 10 cent, okay, but it's important. Saving, thing, giving the seed, planting it into the mind of the child that you are starting to save money. Not only that, invest and expand. So the rest of the money itself, right, Invest. How can children invest money, right? A child. So the dad tell them, very simple. Okay, what you do is this. Every week, right? Okay, uh, end of the week itself, right? You ask your classmate, see who actually uh, want to buy more food. Okay, can, you know, lend them some money. Okay, example. Hey, you are going to canteen. Uh. Hey, you want to eat french fries or not? Not enough money. Uh. I lend you like one dollar. Okay, I lend you one dollar. But next week, you must return me back. Can? Can. How much? He never said 10%. Huh? He asked his uh, friend, how much you want to return me back? So usually children say, oh, I return him back another $1 or 150 That kind of money. So he said, okay, huh? remember, huh? return me back the money next week. Okay, so through this itself, right, the child actually start to observe people, okay, and work and network people and try to do a business like that. Yes, okay. This, the child definitely have made mistake where people don't return money to them. Okay? But this interaction process right, allow the young children to actually start to grow and mix around and understand the value of money and who to give, who cannot be trusted. Okay? So some, if they are lucky, of course, by word of mouth, their business starts to grow. <laughs> okay? And this is how they start to make small little money from there. Okay? It's a process for them to learn. Now, when they make money, of course, okay, it's important to allocate certain money for spending. So this is where they can actually put in the money, expenses, okay, whereby they are only allowed to spend whatever, okay, they, they make, okay, or whatever that's left behind in this expense. They don't spend beyond the, uh, the jar, okay, that they have actually allocated for expenses. So then ask yourself this question, how much have you allocated for your expense? Every month itself, have you actually balanced up yourself and ask yourself, do you give up to anything? Have you 
prepared for certain money to be given away or to save it or even to invest in or to expand it on. If every month, right, whatever earning you have, you did not even plan this amount of money, the needs that you want, are you able then to balance all these things out? No, you can't. So always go back to the same fundamental. Live life as simple as it is, which I mentioned to you, and work out the five jar of Jewish, okay, to plan for your needs. Now next, let's do a bit of exercise, okay? This is a very simple exercise, okay? that uh, I want you all to participate in. Okay, now very simple. Uh, let's see, uh. okay, wow, we are quite divided. Okay, so basically, um, this group, people, okay, those that know the answer cannot share. Okay, understand uh, uh? So uh, some people of you have attended before. So first, I want you all to think about this group, okay? Think about a solution to sell this chocolate at $25. So this is a very simple example. You need to sell this chocolate at $25. I want you to be able to sell this chocolate. Okay? Basically, you have to think of ways to push this chocolate sales. Okay? Each chocolate, one piece at $25. Okay? Not already know, huh? Okay. So, uh, okay. The second one, okay, is the mineral water. Okay, behind. Those know the answer one, huh? Cannot share. I want you to come up with a solution to sell this. This is easier than the chocolate. 